100 years ago, my grandparents made a momentous decision to leave their home in Eastern Europe and journey to this country. They arrived not knowing the language or culture, with no money and no marketable skills. They came to escape religious persecution, but also in search of opportunity. Opportunity for themselves, but more so for their children and their children's children. The land in which they arrived was rich in natural resources, coal, oil, minerals, and timber. But how would they have ever known that they would contribute to the greatest resource of all? They became citizens, and they had children. They settled in a town called Hartford, Connecticut, on a street called Albany Avenue. Albany Avenue was a great place to be raised. When I was a kid, I had great-grandparents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins. We all lived in that area. Great school system, plenty of places to go, beautiful park, Keeney Park. Everybody was happy. People didn't have a lot of money, but in those days it was just a very happy, safe, great place to be a child. My grandparents had a store in the north end of Hartford. My father wound up taking it over with my uncle. My cousins worked there. That was a place where they really enjoyed the community. As a matter of fact, in my father's last days, I asked him the best times in his life, and he told me it was in the north end of Hartford because of the relationships he had with his customers. In the late 1960s, there were some civil disturbances, and the neighborhood really became very fragile after that. A lot of people moved out, a lot of buildings were sold, a lot of businesses moved out, and there was a substantial change to the neighborhood. From time to time, I would drive back and look at the neighborhood, and it was like seeing an old friend that was sick. It made me sad, but I never could figure out anything that I could possibly do to bring it back to the spirit that it had when I was young. In the 50s, it was a vibrant community. In the 60s, you had race relations and uh, problems, and you had a flight. And many of the residents that were here moved into West Hartford, and the avenue went into a decline. Although I was not born in Hartford, I um, arrived here 32 years ago. I've been a homeowner in Upper Albany neighborhood for 31 of those years. When I first moved here, I, I actually purchased my home here because I wanted to contribute to the success of the neighborhood. I was told at that time that there were a lot of changes that were going to be coming down the road. I remember when I came to Hartford, I remember the places that I went. I remember the people in North Hartford, the Albany Avenue area, the Doc Hurleys, who helped me put together a successful television show for teenagers. When I first came to Hartford to be president in 1998 and went to see Albany Avenue, it struck me as, as if I had been here before. Not literally, but figuratively. My father uh, was a merchant, as was his father before him, on Fifth Avenue in Tarentum, Pennsylvania, and it looks a lot like Upper Albany. As I came to know Hartford in those first six months I was here, I thought, gee, this would be an area that we as a university, because we're close by, should help to develop. The Upper Albany area is one of 17 neighborhoods in the city of Hartford. It's a critically important area. It's a major thoroughfare uh, from the city of Hartford uh, to the Avon, Simsbury, West Hartford corridor. Albany Avenue has three elements which I think make it very unique. First of all, it has the population that lives around there. It's very dense. You go to the suburbs, people live on quarter acre lots, half acre lots. You don't get many people that live within the radius of a block. In an area like the north end of Hartford, there are three family homes. There are many of them on every block, so you have an awful lot of people. It's also a major route in Hartford. There are a lot of commuters that drive through Albany Avenue twice a day. And the third thing is we have a very vibrant university, which is in walking distance of Albany Avenue, and that's the University of Hartford. I don't think you'd find those three elements very many places. We have 33,000 cars driving up and down Albany Avenue on a daily basis a lot of potential customers. There are so many opportunities in the Upper Albany area and I think Dr. Fitchman has served as a catalyst and a glue to pull all of those together. Dr. Fitchman is 
was the first and is probably the most significant person who's seen the same opportunities we did to uh, help himself, help his business, but also uh, give back to the neighborhood he grew up in. And that's been a real inspiration to me. Because I'm involved in a number of community organizations, I knew that Dr. Fitchman was looking for um, some space to open another branch of his business. I had taught in the North End of Hartford. My son had taught in the North End of Hartford. And later on, we have our medical office in Manchester. We used to see patients from the North End of Hartford. And one day, my son said to me, Dad, why don't we open an office there? And that was an epiphany to me. And it seemed to me the one way that I could give back to that neighborhood that I had enjoyed so much and had helped my family out so much. And so we began the search for a building and built a building and opened up a medical clinic. Going back to your roots is a very important thing. It shows caring that what you received when you were growing up was positive. You're coming back, you see it's in a negative position, but you remember the positives of what this place was, what this avenue meant to him, to his family. I'm a big champion of learning about your past so that you can understand who you are in the present. And he's a perfect example of that. He knows where he came from. He has moved his business back in part to um, reconnect with the neighborhood that he lived in. It's gotta be unbelievable for him to think back when he was a kid and what his parents did and how much they left there and how much they loved it, because he's told me this. And now Dr. Fitchman is a part of the group of people that is really bringing Albany Avenue back to what it was when he was a child. I met Dr. Fitchman about three, uh, maybe a few years ago, we'll put it that way. And um, it was because of uh, the, this issue that we had, we were working on um, trying to get this quasi-public agency to, to stop basically digging up the streets that are, that are in our community so that we could flourish as businesses. And um, he has a business on the same street as, as our business here. So we, we sort of got together as merchants to, to talk about the issues and, and, um, and that was sort of the beginnings of, of when we met. You've got people that work together. Doctor is right in the middle, working with all these folks that are part of that neighborhood. And here they are and they have an influence. Let me tell you something. If they need something, Doc will be on the, on the phone with the mayor and it happens. And I know that he, he uh, has met with, oh gosh, so many executives. But the point is, it's still the people. I think what we needed in this neighborhood was to identify some new energy, and we've done that, young and old, and working together and you know, working on a strategic plan for the community through the Upper Albany NRZ, um, working with um, all of the various organizations and agencies in the neighborhood on the Upper Albany development and um, Friends of Keeney Park, just putting all of these pieces together, working together on one community vision. I, I think we've, we've got the right formula now to, to move forward. For a person that never got involved in anything in their life, I'm now on seven committees in, in that area and we are all dedicated to trying to get this neighborhood to be better for the youngsters and people that need jobs and better for the senior citizens and just have more goods and services. It's a fantastic neighborhood. It's authentic. You've got wonderful people there and you're going to find things in that neighborhood that you wouldn't find in the suburbs. But we do need to get some of these more sophisticated elements into it and get it looking a little friendlier. I have no doubt that that's going to happen. I can't help but think of how it was in 58 and how it is now, years later. I mean, I've been here over 50 years and what they're doing to it is incredible. I think that Upper Albany is primed, probably unlike any other neighborhood in the city of Hartford, for a significant explosion in a very positive way. As a merchant community, the, the vibe is definitely up. 
I mean, people are thinking about the future. People are, you know, thinking about, you know, making improvements to their properties. You see it happening. The first thing that happened that helped change the neighborhood was Scott's Jamaican Bakery opened on Albany Avenue. And it's a very popular place for people not only in the neighborhood, but people that come from outside the neighborhood. It's a great building, it's clean, they've got flowers out front, nice canopies, and people are attracted to that. The next thing that happened was that the University of Hartford made an enormous investment, took a Cadillac place that was defunct, and put an awful lot of money into it, and made a performing arts center. That is a brand new, shiny building that I would put up in any suburb, and it still would be a gem. And then I came along and built the building that I have, and I've got my office there and a dentist that's just opened next door to me. We also have a new Upper Albany branch at Hartford Public Library. We've got the Artist Collective, a $5 million building with unbelievable activities for youngsters, just something I've never seen in my life. I'm on the board of the Artist Collective. I've done my radio program from the Artist Collective, and that is a magnificent building, and what they've done there with the young people you got a Y there. Whoever thought they'd have a YMCA on Albany Avenue, but they do. And I, and I just think this says something uh, for the neighborhood. I say that it says something for the future of Hartford. I'm very positive on Hartford. And I think Albany Avenue is going to be a big, big part of it once everything is done. As I look at the avenue and I look from Main Street to Westbourne Parkway, there have been changes made. There's been over $95 million in private investment has come into this community, not counting Dr. Bitchman. It's great when the city wants to put dollars behind a project, and it's great when nonprofit institutions want to invest significant sums, but when a private investor comes in, steps up, and dedicates himself wholly to a particular vision that says something about a man's character or a woman's character that can't be measured, it can't be defined, it can't be, um, it can't be contained. If I could predict the future, I think what will happen is one by one, small businesses will come into Albany Avenue offering things like bagel shops, donut shops, uh, clothing stores, coffee shops, restaurants, nice sit-down restaurants, pizza parlors, grinder shops, you name it. And when that starts to happen in that environment, it's going to become a destination. And people will no longer drive through Albany Avenue on their way to work. They will drive to Albany Avenue on their way to recreate. You know, Richard sits on a number of community um, organizational boards, and um, he's a man with great vision, and I'm so happy to be partnering with him. So when he bought that building, we all knew that it wasn't just going to be that building because you can't just buy a building and, and put up a nice shiny new building and think that's going to take care of the rest of the blight in the neighborhood. We know that he has a vision for other properties and um, we're looking forward to him being able to redevelop other properties and, uh, and in addition to the streetscape that's going to be coming through here in 2015 and the facade program that Upper Albany Main Street has just gotten the um, first bit of funding for. So when we finish, we, um, we plan to have a complete street and create an area of destination. You know, my three favorite words are passion, inspiration, and hope. And Dr. Fitchman has planted those three words in the citizens that surround Albany Avenue and that spells success. I've talked to him, I know what he's doing, but where I really measure the difference he's making is when people from the avenue talk about him. Um, and uh, I had an experience about six months ago of going into a meeting with the Upper Albany uh, merchants, most of whom I've worked with for a while, and he's right among them. What a great example come to a Merchants Association meeting and sit there with uh, a person who, uh, who runs a day spa or a hardware store or a, a Caribbean market. I, it was very inspiring and I, and I was just impressed by how easily they accept them. In some ways I think it's, it's generated from his family. He's got so much love 
for his family. They come first in his life. It's been a, a real eye-opener for me. Um, and he's been a great inspiration. And I think that all of those qualities um, sort of funnel into this, this man who, in his humility, wants to do really great things for people who he thinks really deserve the opportunity. That kind of spirit of seeing that as a vibrant commercial strip in Hartford, as a gateway to that community, is so important to our collective futures. And so um, what he's doing should be, he's a groundbreaker, he's a pathfinder. Um, but it should be an inspiration to all of us who trod those paths. Well, when I was a youngster, I was a very happy kid. Everybody was nice to me, everything was pleasant. It was as though there was a big buzz, like a, like a basketball spinning on my finger, and everything was just beautiful. And then one day, I was sitting in my grandmother's house. Actually, this very chair I'm sitting in is from that house. And she told me a story about when she was young and lived in Russia, and there was a pogrom where she was holed up in a second floor of a community center or something and there were angry people outside throwing rocks and uh, with terrible epithets and they were afraid they were going to burn the building down and of course they were all frightened and I've, I've thought of that many many times in my life and how frightening that must have been and then she turned to me and she was the wizened grandmother and I was just a youngster and but for that one moment she became the youngster and she said to me why would they do that they didn't even know us and I've been haunted by that comment throughout my life I've seen events in places like Rwanda and Bosnia. I've seen what's happening in Syria right now, and I think the same thing. My grandmother's words haunt me. Why are they doing that to people that they really don't even know? And I've thought about what answer could I give her, and I've never come up with an answer. But the only way I can think of answering it is that if you really try to help people and prevent them from living in isolation and make things better for a group of people, you are in a way answering that question because you're making people feel better about themselves and it's less likely that bad things are going to happen and more likely that good things are going to happen. And if I was going to do such a thing, why not do it on that street that I was sitting so many years ago, Albany Avenue?